And now a little story from the apple seed. <laughs> Thank you. Well, when I was a little girl, my report cards came in butterscotch-colored envelopes. The report cards themselves were Easter egg green and blue and yellow. I loved to get my report card. Not for the grades. Kids know what their grades are before they ever see the report card. That part's for the parent. I like to get mine because of the comments. Now, when I was in elementary school, our report cards were not computer generated with numbers denoting which uh, comment you should look at, like number 13, 14, and 22, that's your kid. How can you have 35 comments for 400 beautiful, unique children? No. Back in the day, before that technology, our report cards had handwritten comments by the teachers, and I loved it. From kindergarten through fourth grade, all of my report cards had the same theme. If Kimmy wouldn't talk so much. <laughs> Mrs. Wyrick, my third grade teacher, gave me my first review, and I did not like it. She said, if Kimmy would entertain her work as much as she tries to entertain the class. I thought I was doing a good job. Apparently, she did not. <laughs> if Kimmy would apply herself, if Kimmy would stay seated, your daughter interrupts. Your daughter's always bouncing off the walls. They didn't say that, but I've heard that in uh, teacher conferences when I sat in the hallway. <laughs> and it was that way, and it was hard. I would get off the bus at, at the rep on report card day, and I would go in the house, and I'd get at the end of the line of children because I wanted to be the last one to see my mom. All of my siblings were somewhat overachievers, but me. I overachieved in other areas. <laughs> And whenever it was my turn to show my mom the report card, she would begin to shake her head and cluck her tongue, and she'd go, oh, Kimmy, just hand it here. I'd hand it to her, and she'd open it up and look at the grades. Hmm. She'd read the back, and every report card, every semester, she'd write the same thing. We've tried everything. <laughs> it was that way until fifth grade when I found Mrs. Ort, or rather, she found me. Mrs. Ort was a ramrod straight woman. Sensible skirt, rubber-soled bottom shoes, button-down shirts starched with lines down the sleeves, a sharp edge with the iron. Her hair piled high, shellacked with aquanet. Her lips, painted coral number 62, set firm in determination to set us adrift on the sea of life, she the wind in our sails. Well, I was so excited to get her because all of my brothers that went before me, I was the first girl to get her, said that she was the coolest teacher ever. And I was so stoked. I remember the day that they announced who got what teacher. And my mom put us all in the Oldsmobile station wagon. We drove up to the Locust Grove Elementary School. All the doors were open, airing out fresh paint. And we, my mom dropped us off at the entrance. And we all ran down through the hallway on that freshly polished linoleum floor to the bathrooms. Because right beside the bathrooms is where they posted all the pages. And I went and I found fifth grade, and then I found the teachers, and I started looking for my name, and there it was. I got Mrs. Ort as my teacher. I was so stoked to see what made her cool, because she did not appear cool in the hallway. <laughs> well, school started, and the very first day, she took roll call, and then shut the door, and then went over and lifted the top off of a glass terrarium and pulled out a rabbit. And she said, I'm going to let the rabbit run around during class. If you keep your pockets on your seat and the rabbit goes by, you can pet it, but you don't let your pockets leave your seat. So the whole class, this rabbit's hopping around. And you'd be thinking, just come to me. Just come to me. And if you got to pet it, you just were so excited. And then in the middle of class, out of nowhere, she'd go, children, look. Look at the rabbit. Eat a pellet, make a pellet. Eat a pellet, make a pellet. That's how it's done. That's what I thought. I was like, wow, eat a pellet, make some poop. It's fascinating. She was teaching us science right there in the, in, in, the, in the room. And I thought she is the coolest teacher ever. I loved her because I can never remember that woman raising her voice, 
ever, and yet we listened. Other teachers would leave the room and say, work on your work on your work on your work. I'll be back in a minute. And bedlam would ensue. Nobody worked on anything. But when Mrs. Ort left the room, we were quiet, diligent, working hard to get done as much as possible. So when she'd come back, we could show her what we did because we wanted her to be proud of us. And if one of us acted up, she would gently call us to the front and she'd go, come here, sugar. And then she would look out towards the classroom and sit in a chair and put you in front of her so that they could not see your peers, your quivering lip, and the tear going down your face as she explained to you why you were getting in trouble. And she did it in a very calm voice, and you either were sent back to your seat or sent to the office. No one wanted to upset her. Unlike Mrs. Seiler, who ran the library and could not stand me. The library is a place of quiet. Kimmy is never quiet was one of the things on the back of my report cards. I would walk through the library doors so excited. I'm a prolific reader to this day. And I'd walk through the library doors and I could see through the plexiglass window. I wouldn't look directly. I would use my peripheral vision because she scared me. I would see Mrs. Seiler behind her desk. And the minute I walked in, I could see her rise up out of that chair she sat on. And when she'd rise up, I could hear that chair <sighs> sigh in relief as she lifted her body. She would grab a yardstick, not a ruler, and she would stand and watch me as I made my way around the library. And then I would get involved in something and I'd get so excited I forgot that she was watching. Like I, one time I remember I found Charlotte's Web and when I went to the back to see who had taken the book out, Rick Armstrong had written his name there. And I ran out to a table and I was like, Louise, Julie, you're not gonna believe this. Guess who had this book probably in his bedroom? I said, Rick Armstrong had this in his house. And they're like, oh, this is so exciting. And as I was telling them this and we were getting super excited that we had a book that Rick Armstrong had had in his house, flap came that yardstick on the table. And I was banned from the library for seven days for causing a ruckus, she said. <laughs> I've forgiven her because I realize that she was just angry she couldn't retire. <laughs> and she had to take it out on somebody. But whenever you got hauled out of the library by Mrs. Seiler, kids would kind of give you a silent, yeah, stick it to the man, right? <laughs> but not in Mrs. Ort's class. In Mrs. Ort's class, if you got in trouble, they'd look at you with a look like, what are you doing? We love this one. Well, I was in her class about three and a half weeks when she stopped teaching, and I think I was talking to Melissa Cunningham to my right about her new Wonder Woman lunchbox, because that's exciting, right? And she said, Kimberly, stand up. Every head turned and looked at me. I slid out of my little wooden desk, played with the bottom of my Snoopy t-shirt and thought, what did I do that she found out about? She said, you, child, you have a gift, it is the gift of gab, and with it, you could rule the world. And I thought to myself, finally, somebody gets it. I was so excited. I had received pink slips my whole kindergarten through fourth grade for talking too much, disrupting, go to the office, and here's a teacher telling me that it's a gift. Well, when the report cards came out in that class, I was so excited. When she called my name, I ran up and I received it from her with reverence. I ran back to my desk, took it out. I did not look at the grades. I flipped it over immediately. And there on the back, she had written, Kimberly is a pure delight. What? <laughs> I was so excited. I stuck it in my backpack. I was off the bus before it even slowed to a complete stop. I ran in the house and I said, mom, mom, look at my report card. And she said, Kimmy, let's wait. Let me look at Chris's first. He's a psychologist now. <laughs> she said, let me look at Chris's first. I'm like, no, mom, really, you really want to see my report card. I promise you do. Just look at it. She took it, slid it out. She looked at the grades. Hmm. Looked at the back. Gave me a side glance flipped it over and checked the name on the front. <laughs> then she walked over to the kitchen bar and then she wrote something, slipped it back into that butterscotch colored envelope, gave it to me and said, you put this in your backpack. You do not read what I wrote. You hand it to her tomorrow morning and tell her I'm calling her at lunch. Yes, ma'am. Well, the next day I got on the bus and I found an empty green and vinyl seat. 
I slid to the window, turned, unzipped my backpack, and you know what I did. <laughs> Secretly, you want me to do it. I pulled it out, slipped out the report card, turned it over, and there on the back, my mother had written, what are you drinking? <laughs> Well, my mom and Mrs. Ort did talk that day at lunch. And my mom, even to this day, tells me about the conversations they had. Mrs. Ort said things like, Kimmy has gifts that cannot be tested within these four walls because they expand far beyond that. If we don't find a place for her to go while she's in school conforming to what she has to learn, we're going to lose her. And from that day on, they worked hard to find things for me to do. For instance... Not only theater, they got me into theater, not only playing the tonette, which did give me an outlet, but clapping every eraser she could possibly give me to get me out of her classroom. Well, I stayed in touch with Mrs. Ort. I had a morning radio show. I had her on every teacher appreciation day. When I went back home to see my mom, I popped by Mrs. Ort's house. And then she passed away. And I remember at the funeral, her son said to me, I have something for you. I said, okay, and he took me into the bedroom where all the coats were piled high, and he reached beside the bed and put a cardboard box up on the bed, and on the side was my name, my name, my maiden name when I was in her class, and he took off the lid, and he said, my mom saved this, and I said, what, and I went over and looked inside, and there were all the love letters I wrote her about how she was the greatest teacher in the world, and that I just loved her so much, and there were brooches with rusty back pins, <laughs> half the rhinestones missing that I bequeathed to her. There was an essay I wrote about what I wanted to be when I grew up, and she had framed it and kept it on her house wall for a while, and I'd written that I wanted to be Billy Graham. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's still disappointed. <laughs> and I looked at her and her son, and I said, you know what? I am her favorite. I thought I was. I really did. I thought I was her favorite student, and now I know. And he said, yeah, you're her favorite. Come with me. And he took me in the basement and flicked on a light. And there against that cinder block wall were stacks and stacks and stacks of cardboard boxes. Some names I recognized from school, some I didn't. And he said, every one of them was her favorite, all of you. You know, sometimes you don't understand the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. And in hindsight, those glasses gifted to us by life, not so we can beat ourselves over the head with what could have, should have, would have been, but to give us clearer understanding with a vibrancy of colors to move forward in a better, more solid direction. In hindsight, I would do things different. Fifth grade is hard. You don't know whether to run with the wind, wipe snot on your sleeve and play and never brush your hair till those are not in the back. That was my MO. Or fifth grade, do I brush my hair, put on some Bonnie Bell lipstick and act like I have it all together? Fifth grade is tough. That's why it's called tweenagers. And if I would have threw my arms around that woman and thanked her, it would have been socially destructive <laughs> and I would have been made fun of. But now I know the value of a moment. And in hindsight, I would do things different. I get at the end of the line of kids going out the double metal doors to recess. And as they all exited, I would go back into the classroom. And as she sat at her desk and turned to ask me, Kimberly, what is it you want? I would jump in her lap, throw my arms around her and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for teaching me that I do not have to fit in anybody's box. Thanks for joining us for a little story from the Appleseed.